Hello, you aspiring 3D motion graphic artists. Um, we're going to start off um, with After Effects today, looking into what the landscape of 3D, or a lot of people in the world call it 2.5D, because it's not um, completely like a modeling atmosphere, but it gets pretty darn close. Um, this this platform is going to allow us to move into um, a, a better understanding of what 3D space and staging looks like. Um, really trying to get a grasp on that third coordinate, the Z. We all know what the X and Y is from most of our math classes we've taken over the last many years. And then some of you have also had experience with some Z. Um, but uh, this is something artistically that we kind of have to wrap our head, heads around. I'll, I'm going to try to get us to be looking at this not just as artists, but also um, like scientists or technicians, because it is something that is really um, uh, needs a critical mind and an analytical mind uh, in order to think about um, what staging is what the relationships of spatial elements and relationships are um, as well as movement which we'll get into eventually right now it's going to be perhaps um, a little rudimentary but you got to start at the beginning to get towards the end there is no end by the way yeah, that's that's okay that's what makes this exciting it's a deep pool we're getting into so uh, hang tight the first thing I want to do is just talk about how to move into 3D space and how to think about elements, layers, etc. that um, that we can convert into a three-dimensional component in that space. We're going to look at things for a while just sort of as flat surfaces in a 3D world and then we're going to be looking at ways to actually create extrusions and have physical depth. I'm going to start off this way because I think it's really important for you to be able um, to uh, problem solve with the basics before we get into things that are a bit more heavy and advanced. I think you'll appreciate that. Um, so first thing, I'm in After Effects here. I'm going to want to start off with a new project. All of our projects should be at least um, HD. Right, that's the world we live in right now. So um, I'm going to create a new composition. I'm going to use the new composition button. I like to use this button in the project bin, but you can always go to File, New, no, you can't Composition, New Composition, um, or Command N, Apple N, whatever. Um, so uh, what I'm going to I'm going to call this uh, 3D Space one because we might get into space two um, and this is where we have to make sure we remember to tell it and define what our dimensions are so I'm going to use my um, my HDTV 1080 2997 that guarantees that I'm going to have a width of 1920 by 1080 right this is standard HD size if you're going to be working with 2K or 4K, there are those options in there. Um, it's really going to end up bogging your system down if you don't have a heavyweight computer on your side. Um, that being said, we are going to move into some, some work not far from the future here that is going to end up very processor intensive with our machines, um, even just in After Effects. Once we get out of After Effects and move into some of those 3D modeling and animation programs, you're going to see that your machine just might not be up for this battle. And that's when we have to do some serious tech problem solving or waving the white flag and seeing what other options we might have. Um, that is part of the downfall of what this semester looks like in this pandemic since we don't have access to our powerhouse lab with super Frankenstein PCs and nice software. Um, we have to sort of take the burden on 
our own machines. There are some options. We'll talk about that. Um, so um, I've got the right size on my composition here, and um, the duration is something that we need to address. Always figure this out first. It depends on what kind of work you're doing, right? Are you doing a 30 second commercial? Then set it for 30 seconds. Are you just putzing around like we're doing in class? I tend to leave mine at five to 10 seconds. Remember how time code works. If I want this to be five seconds, I'm gonna hit zero, five, zero, zero. If I want it to be 10, I do one, zero, 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 because you kind of read time code from the right to the left. So it's sort of backwards from how we are used to reading. Seconds um, are predefined by frames. So the first thing you see on the right side is frames. We're in an environment where it's 30 frames per second. So every 30 frames equals one second. So if you wanted this to be five and a half seconds, I would do 0515. That would mean 15 frames and five seconds. If I, if I typed in 0530, it would give me, it would just change to be 06 because 30 frames, it's a second. So I'd be saying, hey, give me five seconds and then another second. All right, so just get used to that. The other thing is your background color. I just want to have black for now. It's default color, right? So, <laughs> of course, it shows up with a checkerboard. That's just because I have my transparency grid enabled, and that is on the bottom of my composition window. I have asked for you guys to go through some of the After Effects review um, tutorials that I have. That's all on Moodle um, and tutorials that I put together on, on YouTube. If these things are all of a sudden a surprise to you, that means you got to go back and do some review because we are jumping in as motion graphic artists who have done this before. If you have not gone through an After Effects course and you're in this 3D class, this is going to be a tricky start. You're going to have a lot of work to do on your end in order for us to move forward efficiently and effectively. All right, so I now have this composition. It's just a black void. There's nothing in here I can't even def define if something is 2D or 3D. And this is where I need to have some objects, some assets in this. And so right off the bat, just to keep things super simple, I'm just going to use my, my new solid function under the layer menu, new solid. And it's going to ask me what I want to call it, um, what size do I want this to be, and what color. So I'm, I'm just going to call it, um, oh, geez, I mean, black solid one is fine. I'm just going to change the dimensions and the size. I don't really care what it's called right now. So I'm going to change its size. Click on that guy, boop. And I'm going to make it 400 pixels by 400 pixels just to have a square that's hanging out there. And then I'm going to change its color to something I can actually see, and I'll just kind of make it yellow for now. So here I am in a composition with a new solid. This solid being square, 400 pixels by 400 pixels, it automatically lands in the center of my, of my workspace. By default, this solid is in, is in 2D world. If I open up position, and I'm going to try to get you guys hooked on these shortcuts. P on your keyboard opens up position. So I hit P. There it is, position. I have two coordinates. And it's currently at 960 by 540. What are those coordinates about? Well, that's telling me that my overall composition is 1920 wide. That is on X. So there are 1920 pixels horizontally that make up this space on my X. I have 1080 on the Y. The fact that this solid is popped right in the center of my composition and its anchor point is in the center of its shape, and that's going to be the case if you bring in any information from Photoshop, like a JPEG or PNG or just Photoshop layers, they always have the anchor point set to the center of that layer. And that center of the layer is currently in the center of my comp. So that coordinate there that says my X is 960, that is half of 1920. 
the y value 540 that is half of 1080 so that's how you can see this um, orchestration of coordinates this is a 2d element right now I have two dimensions that I'm working with X and Y I now want to turn this into a 3d element so I'm going to click on the little button underneath what looks like a 3D cube. If you don't see these things, remember, because you're an After Effects artist, this is called toggles. I mean, sorry, this is switches. And you have to toggle between switches and modes at the bottom of that timeline window. So toggle between switches and modes. Modes are things like your blending modes, track mats, etc. Switches are all the little buttons that you can press in order to make your layers be defined under certain values. I'll turn that phone off so it doesn't interrupt me anymore. So there is one that is the cube. The cube is 3D layer. Allow this layer to be manipulated in three dimensions. As soon as I click on that cube, now I get other information. The information that I get for position is three coordinates. I have an X. I have a Y, and now I have a Z. By default, my Z value, every time I start off the beginning of 3D World, is it sets it at a value of zero. Positive Z means it's moving further away from me, and me being a default camera. There is no camera in here yet, but there's always the default camera. We'll get there eventually. A negative Z means that it's coming closer to me or the camera. So to just to demonstrate, if I slide left and right on the X value, it should move from right to left. Let me just hit Command Z to undo that. If I move left to right on the Y, it should move down or up because it's either going more value in Y or less value in Y, either getting closer to zero or further away. Then we have the Z value. And as I, as I increase the value of Z, this cube just right now looks like it's getting smaller, but it's actually moving away from me. And as I increase or decrease it into the negative values, it gets closer to me. If you ever want to see these things move at a more drastic pace, just hold down shift while you manipulate that value. So I'll start scrubbing left or right, and now I'm holding down shift, and you can see how it definitely is moving at a lot much faster rate. At one point, it gets so close to me that it moves behind my camera. So now it's like, it's back there, I can't see it, right? So that's what happens if you get too close to your camera. Anytime you change these values, know that if you just wanna restart and start over, you can um, do a right click or a control click and just hit reset and that'll reset those values back to where it was when we first plopped this thing in there. You're going to see now that there's also little arrows on this thing. You're going to see a, a, a red arrow and that is your X value. You're going to see a green arrow that is your Y. So even if you just hover over these things with your mouse, they redefine themselves saying, hey, this is X. So if you were to grab it on stage, you can move it laterally, laterally from right to left. So that defines our X value. If you scroll on the green arrow, you'll be able to move this up or down on the Y. Then sort of what you can see is that there is a Z. So you kind of have to put your, your cursor right over that thing because it's an arrow pointed directly at you. And we don't really have any perspective right now but that's an arrow sticking like right towards your face. If you hover your mouse on that thing, you can see that it says Z, and you should be able to drag it left or right and see that it's either getting closer to you or further away. Um, and then we have things like rotation, but we'll get there in a second. So those are just the very first steps that you take in order to turn a layer into a three-dimensional object in After Effects. This is still paper thin. This thing looks like maybe it's a cube, but if I start to rotate this thing, you're going to see that it just turns into a tiny little sliver of space as far as what it occupies 
um, spatially. So let's look at that. I'm going to turn on rotation, rotation being R on the keyboard. Rotation is now looked at under um, four different attributes. Orientation, and then you have your X, your Y, and your Z rotations. So orientation is a way for you to keyframe or move um, an object's uh, orientation in space all at once, or you can choose to do just the X, just the Y, or just the Z. And you'll find out eventually why you would want to work with one versus the other. But um, if, I, if I wanted to look at this thing from the side, I would think about trying to pivot on my y-axis. My y-axis is the one that goes like this, and I'm going to have it go boop, spin along it. The x-axis axis is the one that is um, on a horizontal plane. So then it would spin it kind of like this way, right? So either one of those, I'm just going to grab them and do the y just because it's what I'm envisioning. And as I start to click and drag on that value, the, the, the degree value, you can see that this is starting to rotate. And I'm, I'm getting an idea of what this element looks like in space. And then if I get to 90 degrees, it just kind of goes away. That's because there is no volume to this. It is, it is not even a pixel thick. If it was one pixel thick, then I would see a little bit of an edge. But it's merely just... Um, a piece of paper, <laughs> let's call it that. Um, so, so that that's what you can expect with these sort of objects. And there are some fun workarounds, and we'll get to that eventually. But what's important for us to look at as far as values for rotation go is that it's not just um, a defined number. It is a degree and a revolution. Um, so if I'm, if I'm looking at the Y rotation, I do have my degrees, so I can go, you know, up to 90, and then it's like sort of going this way, I can go past it, and so now I'm kind of looking at the back side of it, and then I get to 180, and now it's absolutely the back side of it. If I keep going all the way to 360, here we go. Uh, pop. It changes over. Now I can see that I have done one full revolution and now I'm on new degrees. And this is important for us to understand that you could say uh, in animation I want this thing to rotate four revolutions. I don't have to go to the degrees, I just have to go to that revolution um, input data spot there. And I can say four. And so that means that I have now spun four revolutions. I can't tell because it's still straight in front of me, but this is now one, two, three, four revolutions in front of me. There's no animation going on. I haven't keyframed anything. So it's hard for me to actually understand that. But that's what those uh, differences and ranges are. If we want to look at other things that you can do in the world of 3D, I'm just going to close that and open all my transforms and see that my anchor point has three values, so where what I define as the center for this piece of uh, asset, um, it also can be moved in three different dimensions now. The position we've already talked about. Scale also has three dimensions that you can scale. Yeah, the interesting thing is that this is a flat, like I said, piece of paper, basically. You can't scale Z and make it fatter. It just doesn't work. So scale really only works um, on the X and Y uh, under this circumstance. And then we talked about orientation and rotation. And then obviously opacity doesn't have any more than one value because opacity is just, is it transparent or is it opaque? There's no three dimensions to that. Um, so you wouldn't expect to see that change. I'm going to stop here for now and then we're going to jump into working together on making um, a little bit more interesting work. But at least now we can start to see how we identify something as 3D in a space, but also what the coordinates mean, how to do basic manipulation, and what to expect on those different axes. So I'm asking you to go through and do that on your own. Just practice. 
get your hands in there, get a little dirty. It'll take you just a few minutes, and then we'll jump into the next thing. But uh, you, you got to make sure that you can do this first. All right, get after it.